Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Chris, and today we're going to talk about the Canon RF 16mm 2.8. It's this lens right here. This lens is pretty cool. It's actually the exact same dimensions as the new Canon RF 50mm 1.8. I like this lens a lot because it's a great option for people who are looking to get a wide angle but don't want to spend a lot of money. So everything that you saw at the beginning of this video was all shot on this lens. Um, let's just get right into it and talk about the pros and cons. So the pros with this lens. So first things first, this lens is extremely affordable. It's easily one of the cheapest options for any camera with an RF mount. $300 I think is a pretty fair and reasonable price for what you get with this lens. Another thing I like about this lens is it's really, really small, extremely compact. So when you throw this in your bag, you're not really gonna, you're not gonna be hurting. You know what I mean? You can add this in your bag and it's just minimal weight. It's not even a pound. The autofocus in this lens is actually really awesome. Thanks to the STM motors inside, they're also very quiet. So if you have this lens on your camera with a microphone, you don't have to worry about hearing your lens focus in and out of the image. And the overall build quality of this lens is actually pretty decent. It's not metal, but it's, I'd say, thick quality plastic <laughs> um, with a metal mount on the back, thankfully. Not like those old school EF lenses where if you went the cheap route, the mount was plastic and you could break that. Um, so you don't have to worry about that here. And the focus ring in the front is actually surprisingly smooth. Now that we got all the pros out of the way, let's talk about the cons. A couple things about this lens that I did not like. Overall sharpness on this lens is not great. The sharpest part of the image is going to be in the center, but as you get further and further away from the center of the image, it's going to just get softer and softer. Other than the lack of sharpness, you're also going to have to deal with heavy vignetting on this lens. Vignetting is really, really bad, especially in photo. You don't really see it that much in video. You can kind of get away with it, and obviously you can fix it in post, but I had to let you guys know there's a lot of vignetting on this thing. Another thing I noticed right away with this lens is obviously with a cheap wide angle lens, there's quite a bit of distortion. And you can get away with it if, again, you have whatever your focal point is. If it's at the center of the image, then it's not gonna look too bad. But as soon as they start to veer off to the left, the right, the top, or the bottom, it gets extremely it's distorted. It's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> you get what you pay for, you know? The last thing about this lens that kind of bothered me initially when I first got it is the filter size. The filter size was surprisingly small, and I don't even know why I didn't consider it or look at it when I was purchasing this lens, but the filter diameter for this lens is about 43 millimeters. That's really, really small, and it's pretty tough to find professional quality filters for a filter thread that small. So I got a couple options off of Amazon and tried them out. They're all pretty cheap for the most part. They're not like a Polar Pro, Peter McKinnon, variable ND filter, nothing's gonna be that good for a size this small. When I got back home after shooting all those pictures and videos with this lens, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the quality. I mean, now when I compared it to my 15 to 35, it's a night and day difference. You know, you, you can't really compare. But given the price, $300, and looking at, like I said, looking at the images that you've already seen, I was like, you know what? It's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. Like if I was just starting out, I would totally be cool with rocking the 16 millimeter 2.8 because 300 bucks, I can vlog with this, I can take pictures with this. I mean, it gets the job done, you know, it, it really does. And you'd save over $2,000, you know, starting out. So I actually had a lot of fun shooting with this little lens. I was pleasantly surprised. And if you have a Canon camera with an RF mount, and you're looking to get a wide angle lens to vlog or anything of the sort, and you don't wanna spend all that money, definitely check this one out. You know, pick it up off Amazon, go to Best Buy and get it. They have it there as well. Try it out, see if you like it, see if it works for you. You know, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. So overall, I am absolutely grateful that Canon is finally starting to release lenses at an affordable price. You know, because when they first started to release lens for the RF mount, all of them were professional and <laughs> extremely expensive. And um, they're amazing, and I have most of them, and I love them all. But you know, not everybody is a professional. Not everybody wants to spend two, $3,000 on one lens. 
So I think that this is really, really awesome. I had a lot of fun shooting this video because it just reminded me of when I first started out. You know, my first camera that I got when I first started this channel was the Canon 80D. I've come a long way since then. The first time I ever shot a vlog was on the Canon EFS 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Super cheap lens. You could probably buy it right now, brand new for like 50 bucks or something like that. It's super, super cheap, completely made out of plastic. You know, just, just trash. Like when you compare, <laughs> when you compare that to what I'm shooting with now, trash, garbage. But everybody has to start somewhere and you can still get great shots with cheap equipment. It's not even about your gear. It's about knowing your gear and how to use it. If you're just getting started or if you just want a, you want to add a wide angle to your kit and you don't want to break the bank, I think that this is an amazing option. Just go into it knowing that there's heavy vignetting, there's a lot of distortion, that it's not extremely sharp, that the filter size is really small. If you go in knowing those things, you're gonna be fine. But anyways, you guys know the drill. That's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and smash that like button for me. It actually makes a difference. If you don't wanna miss anything that I put out, ring that bell. Also, if you aren't already, follow me on Instagram at Chris Rillington. And if you dig my vibe, hit subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.